Good to see you all again. Hello, welcome. Started a little theme called Everybody Matters and we're sort of continuing that sort of theme this week because you are welcome here. In case you wondered, you are very welcome here. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you that we can just pause for a moment now in your presence. Thank you, God, that you welcome us and we welcome one another into your house this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing and all that you will do. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, those for friends, neighbours, relatives that may be unwell, medical conditions, other issues. Father God, we, we just pray. Lord, that you will be the answer to their prayers. We continue to lift up Neil, we continue to lift up Ken, we continue to lift up Les, we continue to lift up Michael in Bundaberg, Father God, and others and his family, and you know the whole situation around what people are facing and going through, waiting for tests, waiting for results, trying this, trying that. Lord God, I, I pray that you continue to be with Graham and Janet, Lord, as they... Uh, we're on the cancer journey, Father God, and, and continuing treatment and tests as well, and no doubt others that are close to us with different issues and ailments, Father, but you hear our prayer. Be our hope and be our healer. And this morning, Lord, as we open your word, I pray that you have something for us to hear, something for us to feed on today, Lord, as you welcome us as your church, as you welcome us as your people, because everybody matters in Jesus' name. Amen. So today this message is for everybody. And I love this verse, uh, familiar to us probably, Jeremiah 29, 11, and it'll be up there on the screen for you because God has a place for you. He has a plans for you. He has purposes for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to give you hope and a future. Plans to give you purpose. Plans to give you direction. What's on your schedule? How's the calendar looking? How's that diary going? God does not check your schedule to see if you have a prior commitment. And neither does the devil. He doesn't see that on Tuesday afternoon at 3pm you are free and so he turns up with fear, anxiety and a panic attack. Let us stay in a place where we can enjoy God's presence. We can enjoy God's people. Make room for Him. Make room for one another because you are welcome here. Let us receive His goodness, His mercy and grace and be refreshed by His Holy Spirit. Stay in a place where you see the presence of God at work. What did the psalmist say? I lift up my eyes to the hills. Psalm 121. Up there for you. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. Lift our eyes. Where does our help come from? At times I wonder how some people survive. Without God. Amen? Anyone else? Sure. I wonder right. how they survive. Without a loving Christian community, without prayer, without hope. Let's lift our eyes to the hills and be reminded where our help comes from. It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Where does your help come from? Another podcast? TED Talk, self-help book, hopefully not. Nothing wrong with those things. But our help comes from God. What if God wants to reset your schedule? What if he wants to interrupt your day? What if he wants to change your diary? Will you let him? 
As we continue to create a church culture and environment where everyone matters and where people can find their place here in this church, will we, will we be willing to make a change? Because God led and God directed and we needed to create some room for somebody with a need, with a concern, so that they felt welcome in this place. I know you have plans, I know you have ideas, I know there were things that you wanted to do but they didn't happen last year, but God is saying to us this morning, let me reschedule. It'll be okay. Because I have better things waiting down the road. Just trust me with the details, God says. Trust me with the details. And be obedient in the process. I'm sure from time to time some of you think, what am I doing with my life? Or I should be doing this thing, or I should have more money in the bank, or I should have a better job. I'm supposed to be retired. I should know my Bible better. I should pray more. I should be doing more things for God, I'm, I'm sure. How come they're further down the road than me? God wants us to hear His voice this morning. Run your own race. Let Him set your time line. I saw this picture the other day. Remember our good old mate Noah? Yeah. There he is in the ark. It's pouring with rain. Sometimes faith will make you look stupid until it starts <laughs> raining. <laughs> Noah was 525 years old when he built the ark. I'm sure it wasn't on his schedule or to-do list. But he faithfully followed God. In the book of Hebrews, up there on the screen for you, verse 11, uh, sorry, chapter 11, verse 7, it reads... By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is keeping with faith. By faith he built an ark. Eleven years into waiting, Abraham tried to have a baby with Hagar. He thought, hey, I'm going to set my own schedule. I'm tired of waiting for God's promised son. I'm going to take things into my own hands. Then God tested Abraham again. After he'd had his son Isaac in Genesis 22, 9 to 13, we read. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Just, just imagine that, this, this young boy. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But, but the angel of the Lord called out from heaven, called out, Abraham, Abraham. And he says, here I am, he replied. I reckon there should be, and a great sigh of relief, but it's not there. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your only son. Your only son. And then Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering. 
instead of his son. Be faithful to the process. Be faithful and follow God's lead. It might seem strange at first. Have faith to take a step and walk the road ahead, even though the way may look uncertain, even though it may seem a bit unclear, even though you may feel a bit unsure, but you're stepping out with our good God. Noah built an ark. Abraham, go and sacrifice your promised son. Some of the best experiences and some of the best stories and some of the best God moments in my life and in our lives have been those unplanned, unscheduled and unexpected blessings and unexpected joys that God has brought our way. The early church were a small group of Jesus followers who changed the world, who, com who were committed to loving God, loving others, caring for one another. In Acts 4 we're reminded that, I think it says there, that all the believers were one. They took care of each other. They shared the message of Jesus Christ. They offered grace and hope. They cared. They loved Life is too valuable and our calling too important to waste time, friends, on what just doesn't matter. And if you can read that, it says, He makes everything beautiful in His time. From Ecclesiastes chapter 3. He Lord God Almighty makes everything beautiful in His time. This message is for us. This message is for everyone because you are welcome here. God bless you. Amen.